Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This week, I want to tear in to the Strands drill press and fix the power down, broken power down feed that this thing has. I would love to be able to utilize that feature, but unfortunately, because it's missing components, I haven't been able to, and we explored that on a uh, past video. Some of you may have watched it, some of you may not. But just know that the power down feed on this doesn't work, and I want it to. So, let's see if we can't develop a game plan tear into this thing maybe and see if we can't get started fixing it. I'm already a little ahead on parts thanks to an awesome viewer so let's see what we can do. So in the first video that we did on our drill press when we ex were exploring the reason why that the drill press didn't work in the power down feed section we found that it was just missing the gear for some reason. Somebody may have took it out because of safety reasons. Well that's as far as I got in that repair. And an awesome viewer from Sweden, Johnny Westrom, took it upon himself to research what gear that I needed. Because it wasn't available, we found that it wasn't available from the manufacturer anymore. Johnny took it upon himself to manufacture this gear in his awesome home shop. It is a Module 2 22 tooth gear. He machined it out of brass. Awesome. So how about that? A Swedish machinist made a gear for my Swedish drill press. He even shipped it all the way over here on his dime. So how cool is that? Even sent the no go go, the go no go gauge uh, to show how good of a fit on the bore. He, he had to contact me and ask me uh, what uh, bore size it was. And from the quick measurement that I did, we got 22 millimeters. So we need to modify this blank in order to make it fit in our drill press and hopefully solve our power down feed problems. So thank you, Johnny. That is awesome of you. We just got to make this gear to where it'll fit in the drill press. So I'm running really short on shop time this week. So hopefully, you know, we can get this repair done pretty quick. We tore down and we tore into this drill press before. So we know that this thing comes apart pretty easy, actually, at least as far apart as I've had it, it's come apart easy anyway. Somebody has painted this drill press and I wish, really wish that they wouldn't have because I love the original color. That these that they painted these So back in here is where the gear gets installed, and it gets installed right on top of this brass collar that's hooked to the slip clutch here that is actually hooked to a drive shaft that powers the gearbox, the power down feed gearbox on the side here. Now, the gear is powered by this gear here, but as you can see, there's no gear there to power. Originally, it was probably phenolic. You know, it could have broken, and a technician got in here and took it out, just the pieces out, or, they simply did not want power down feed on this drill for safety reasons and uh, took it out. Who knows, right? Doesn't matter. But anyway, to get to this to install a gear on it, to measure the thickness of the gear blank that we need, we need to take off this other housing, half of the housing here, which means we have to in remove all the shifters on the other side of the case here. So let's get started doing that. So these are plastic, which is not that great. They're not broken, at least not yet. Well, actually, I take that back. This one is cracked. So hopefully we can get them off without totally destroying them. And they're just held in by some roll pins. That's what it looks like. So I'm just going to try to see if I can't drive those roll pins out.
Oh, wow, a little spring and a ball bearing for the detents. So I believe these little oilers, they just come out with a little bit of wedging. I'm gonna use this little, well, yeah, oh, yeah, that is right. Little KVC tools, adjustable pry bar. Love this thing. Like a charm. So not long ago, KBC Tools contacted me and they wanted to work with the channel. Just, you know, help me out with tools and stuff on occasion, and I really appreciate that. You know, they, they've seen where I've talked, talked good about them, and I've bought a bunch of stuff from them. So thank you, KBC Tools. I appreciate it. Go check them out. They're a good company run by good people. So what I'm hoping is that this section of the gearbox will slide off as easy as the other, leaving all those gears still attached, you know, to their shafts there. Well, it'd help if I took the last bolt out of there. What was that? So I had never had this side of the gear case off. So I'm hoping it'll come off leaving all the gears attached to the shafts and they don't fall down like, you know, like a deck of cards. I don't see any more fasteners. Oh, is that a screw in from the bottom? It is. Oh, right through there. Wow, that's amazing. I would have never seen that. Hopefully there's no more of those hidden fasteners. Kind of tricky. Yeah, before I get too deep in this, I need to do a little mental preparation. This stuff seemed to give my dad magical repair powers, so maybe it'll do it for me as well. So maybe I can just scoop this upper half 
out of the way enough to to get to get to that, maybe. Without everything just flopping out everywhere. So, okay. What's next? And she's cute. She grows so quick. They they grow just every day. It's crazy. Their rate that they grow. She likes her mushrooms too. Yep. <laughs> so our gear is not going to be very thick. Looks like maybe about a quarter of an inch. It's gonna sit right on top of this slip clutch mechanism. We've got a washer there and a snap ring holding it on. And then we have to cross drill the gear in order to, you know, to lock it onto the, or to pin it onto the actual slip clutch. And that's, that's pretty much it, I guess. Let's get us a measurement and uh, then we'll part us off a piece of that gear blank and, you know, measure our, our, uh, pinned distance from the center of the shaft. That way we can put it in our gear blank. All right, let's see how thick this is gonna have to be. Not very. Uh, 230 thousandths, maybe six millimeter, right around in there. So, I mean, Johnny made us a lifetime supply, three or four lifetime supplies, if we can get it right the first time. When we make it. So I'm going to pull off this snap ring and this keeper and then we'll part us off a chunk of this gear in the lathe. Okay. Twenty-five, two thirty. All right. So now we can, you know, get our gear blank in the in the lathe here. I turned some aluminum yesterday, and you know, some serious aluminum turning where I was removing lots of material, and it is a mess. Um. So all we need to do part us off a chunk of this, and. Then we'll have to just set up in our other drill press. Well, we'll have to find out where we need to drill our cross pin hole. And then we can uh, install it. Hopefully it'll be that simple. Sure that our parting tool is nice and square uh, and I just square up the face of the holder uh, with the face of the chuck loosen our top nut there that way when I part this off I get a nice as clean a cut as possible anyway
going to come in and just touch the leading edge of my parting tool to the front of the work. I know that this parting blade is 150 thousandths wide, or you know, right on four millimeter, I think. So we just to where we just see the slightest amount of chips coming off. And there it is. So now I know that the leading edge of this tool is right in line with the face of this work. So I've got a two inch travel dial indicator down here. So I'm just going to zero that. I know my tool's 150 thousandths wide, so we're going to come in the width of the tool. 150, basically, it's 151, really. And then we'll zero that. So now we know the far side of our tool is in line with the face of the work. Now we can dial in our depth or our width of our gear blank that we want to take off there, which in this case is 225. One, two, twenty-five. Part it off, and we should be good. So now, I'm just going to take a small file and go in between these teeth and remove the small burr that I raised when I parted it off. So there is the first and only sign of the old gear that I've found. It's actually a piece of phenolic. So I can say with confidence that it wasn't removed for safety. It was removed. Well, <laughs> it removed itself. It would just come apart, I'm sure. So there we go, yeah. So there's our gear. I think it's gonna work out really well. Now, it dry, this gear drives this shaft through these two roll pins. Well, actually, one's a roll pin, and then the other one that I've stuck in here is one that Johnny sent. Was that, will that slide off there? Because if that will, it'll make my life easier. It will. Okay. Bingo. Now I can work on this on the bench. Okay, that's good.
So after giving this quite a bit of thought, and I've got the gear laid out, center to center distance is the same as my two center to center distance pins here, but it's always hard to get two dowel pins to line that back up, right? So what I'm gonna do is just put two new pin holes into this uh, clutch housing, won't hurt a thing. So I'm just gonna put my gear blank onto here, offset it just slightly from the original two pin holes and then uh, drill it and ream it for two new ones. That way I know for a fact that it fits as good as possible and I won't have to mess with it anymore. So here we go, we'll just put that on there and drill two new pin holes through both the gear and the clutch at the same time so we know that they're, they'll be right on the money. It's just a, an amazingly good fit. A little snug, but that's the way we want it. So we're going to use this drill press to drill and ream our holes in here. This one does not have power down feed. I'm going to use the, uh, the uh, adjustable stops here so I can get both holes to the same depth and not drill through the uh, top portion of the slip clutch there. And then the Actual depth does not matter all that much as long as, as long as we don't go through. Now we got to ream them out.
now we know for sure that our pins will go in and line up perfectly between the gear and the slip clutch. All right, so our pins are slip fit. And what I'm gonna do is use just a dab of retaining compound on them, hold them in place, and then I'll just probably leave them alone as long as they don't uh, hit anything. They're a little bit proud, well, quite a bit proud, but I don't think it'll hurt nothing. And if I have to, I can just zip them off with a cutoff wheel. Uh, there we go. Now we can reinstall it. Is it going to fit? It is. Check that out. Nice. couple washers here you gotta get lined up that hold these shafts in the proper spots be easy to mess up oh <laughs> I do have to trim those pins they're hitting the case well better to find out now then after I get it all back together Kind of a pain. So that looks pretty good. It's driving our gear like it should. Feels nice and smooth. So I just went over to the grinder and put just a slight taper on the end of this roll pin, hoping it'll start a little easier. So it's time for the moment of truth, and I'm almost certain that it will work, but I know that I need a better spring and stuff in the actuating mechanism on off. So that's turning. There it goes. We have power down feed. One, two.
three speed. So three speed or four speed? I think it's four. One, two, yeah, four speed. So that's the slowest speed. Second, third, and fourth. That's awesome. Let's see if we can't drill something with it. Power drill something with it. So let's start off easy and drill through this chunk of aluminum. That's nice. Boom. Wow. Really nice, consistent to uh Consistent finish on the inside as well, which is what you would expect when you power a power drill. Awesome. I'm gonna do another one just for fun. So now something a little more testing. It's a piece of three quarter inch. I think it's cold rolled. That's on its slowest down feed. It's doing it. Look, Mom, no hands. And there it goes. Very nice. We'll speed that up a bit. Try it again. It's a little thicker chip. Still need to work on this engagement to a little bit. Not quite as easy to engage as it as I think it should be.
Man, that's nice. So we were successful and this thing works the way that it should. So I'm super happy about that. I'm glad to have it to where I can either use it in the manual mode or and now in the automatic mode. Still needs a few odds and ends done to it. Needs a super good cleanup, but I am stoked to have this thing, you know, operating as it should. Now, between these two drill presses, this one is by far a little more, you know, universal. Higher top speed by double than the one over there and a lower low end speed. So you can run a larger range of drill bits with this thing. Plus, obviously, you have the ability to, to power drill, which, you know, is a ton of extra components over just a manual drill press makes one far more expensive to produce and maybe a little more complicated to work on but if i had the choice between the two you know i would i don't know i'd take them both you know this would be if i had to take one drill press it would be this one so that's it i guess for this week anyway thanks for watching Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out whatsoever, much appreciated. And I'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you want to scream. Since the day you're just a flower on your own waiting for the sun to blossom hoping to break through the storm